Today I'm joined by the number 10 ranked UFC flyweight contender, Jesse Jess, Jessica Rose Clark. She'll be taking on Andrea Lee at UFC on Fox 31 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on December 15th. Okay, so I'm just I'm just going to say this. It's going to sound really like some ass kissing bullshit, okay? <laughs> but it's it's straight up okay. the truth. Straight up the truth. <laughs> so it's been it's been really <laughs> cool, I think. It's to kind of watch your journey uh, in your MMA career so far. Like, cause I remember watching you uh, in Invicta, I think, think for your debut against Panny and just kind of like, who's this yeah. crazy chick with this, like the hair that's all colorful and stuff, you know? <laughs> and then like seeing you now, cause um, I went and covered Bellator 206 and I saw you there too. I mean, we didn't meet or anything, but I saw you and I was like, damn man, I feel like I'm looking at a superstar now, kind of <laughs> just like, it's honestly like i would see like rampage and vanderlei and i was, wouldn't feel it maybe i'm just weird but i was like so she's come a long way like i mean you're a top flyweight now it's just it's, it's really cool i think i'm just saying <laughs> oh thank you i appreciate that that's really nice to hear yeah. must be doing something right yeah yeah i mean do you notice anything i mean obviously ufc is different from you know back in the day and you're going to the pi now and all that stuff yeah, I don't really notice much other than I have a little more money than I used to, but I'm still broke. <laughs> and, like, it's kind of, it's weird sometimes, but here in Vegas, and then when I go back home, you know, getting recognized by people is a little strange, but it's still the same. I still do the same thing. I just think I have the ability to be more um, selective and proactive with my training now. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, the, <clears throat> speaking of that, I mean, the last time we talked was uh, before your last fight with Jessica I in Singapore, of course, uh, and we talked a bit about yeah. how you were feeling physically a lot better going into that fight, uh, more than really any other, uh, because you had given your body a much-needed break, you know, just from the various weight cuts and yeah. all that good stuff, <laughs> and so you've had a fairly sol yeah. solid, solid gap, I guess you could say, between that fight and this upcoming one, I mean, at least compared to your 2017, which was pretty nonstop. Uh, so I imagine that hasn't made things worse on your body, right? And then on top of that, you've recently hit the four-month mark on your sobriety. So big congratulations there. Yeah. And so Thank you. how are you feeling physically ahead of this fight? Uh, yeah, I feel really good. You know, I, I've only, this is only my fourth time going to 125. Obviously, the rest of my fight, we're at 35. So my body's still adjusting to the cut, but finally this camp I started at a much lower walking weight than I have previous camps. So um, it's really nice not having to spend the full 12 weeks just stressing about my weight cut. Because even for the Jessica flight, like I started so heavy because I'd had time off that whilst I felt great by the end of it, it was still kind of weird because the whole camp I was just like, got to get the weight off, got to get the weight off. Whereas this one, I've been able to relax a little bit more enjoy it and actually enjoy my training and enjoy camp enjoy the process and yeah I, I feel great you know and I, I just changed uh camp as well so since I've done that I feel mentally and emotionally a lot better than what I have in the past so I think that that's going to make all the difference as well yeah yeah for sure I mean just from I mean I don't know how much it says but like looking at your social media it seems like you're a lot more focus just because it doesn't seem like you're on as much as you used to I guess but <laughs> you know it seems like seems like you're doing really well you know <laughs> yeah I'm having a great time that's it I'm actually like enjoying camp now which is not nice. usually I get so stressed out like I always enjoy it but I'm always kind of stressed as well but now like I'm able to set my own schedule I've got great people to work with and it's just I feel yeah way happier going into this fight than I have in a long time yeah, yeah, positivity, definitely a very big, uh, big key just in, just in life overall, I would say. Yeah, so. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, can't go wrong there. <laughs> and I also thought it was really cool to see uh, your good friend, teammate, roommate, I believe, uh, Chelsea Ray, a.k.a. C. Ray, right? <laughs> Getting yeah. sober with you, which I'm sure has been really helpful, as I imagine it would be for anyone, whether they had a quote-unquote, you know, problem or not. And w while going through that journey together... She's also started her MMA career and made her amateur debut last month. What's all that been like? Just yeah. going through that with her and seeing your close friend start her career. Man, it's been 
I, I've never experienced it before, and it's been incredible because, like, I've always coached amateur fighters and stuff, you know, but I ha like I haven't been so uh, involved with them as what I am with Chelsea. Like, she lives with me, you know, so we spend every single day together. We were training together at Syndicate. Um, when I decided to go sober, she I didn't even communicate that with her, you know, like she knew that I was doing it, oh, but wow. I didn't know that she wanted to do it as well. So then she she made the decision to quit with me and was like, I'm going to do it as long as you do it, you know, because she, she knew that I needed the support. And she, she, like, I don't know, I know I've helped her a lot with her career so far, but I don't even think she realized just how much she's helped me. Um, so to be able to be there with her for her MMA debut, knowing how hard she's worked and how long she's been working for it, even though she lost, like, she killed it. She was so happy to be there. I've never seen her so happy and just so grateful and just enjoying what she gets to do because it was like the culmination of years, years, years of frustration and hardship and she finally got to, to do the one thing that she loves and it was an amazing experience just for me being on the sideline, you know, let alone yeah, I don't know. It's cra- it's crazy. It's crazy. I feel like I feel like she's my little sister sometimes, you know. And I get to watch her do these really amazing things and grow into this really incredible person. And I'm very blessed that I get to do that. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think it would be. Yeah, that's really great. That's cool. It's super cool. And yeah. <laughs> I, I I imagine is is I hear people. You know, they say when they watch like their teammates and stuff fight, it's like a lot harder than when they're like more stressed for their teammate than when they're fighting do you feel that way with Chelsea now <laughs> no you know because I know I know how what she's put into every kid you know the only time I could ever be nervous and this is the same thing that I say to like my friends and family about watching me fight is that the only time I could ever be nervous is, is if I didn't think she had prepared properly mm. but I was there with her for every every single session you know um, every team session, I watched her go and do privates. I watched her run at five o'clock in the morning. You know, I, I got to see what she was eating. I saw how hard she was working. So there was no nerves at all because either way, whether she won it or lost it, you know, she was just happy. She prepared well. You know, you can't you can't control the outcome. The only thing you can control is what you put into it. She put everything into it. So no, I wasn't nervous for it at all. I was just excited for her. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense, especially if you. You know, when you're that involved. Yeah, I get that. I get that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, probably too involved sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too close. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, just, just to circle back now a tiny bit to uh, the eye fight. Um, I don't think I need to say really yeah. anything about what went wrong or anything like that because... Well, one, I'm not your coach, like uh, many people on social media, apparently. <laughs> and two, um, oh, I have so many coaches. <laughs> I know you, you have all the advice you could ask for. <laughs> and oh, then, no, I love it. <laughs> and then two, I think you already also kind of know from what I remember seeing, uh, and just from my perspective, and I think everyone else's, it was kind of clear, anyways. I mean. You were on your way to winning that fight, but then the late, late takedown kind of is what stole it for her. Yeah. Um, and then the thing I found most interesting was that after the fight, I saw you and Arlene Blenko talking about it on Instagram or something like that, and how it was one of those fights where you didn't feel like you showed up mentally. And when you look back at that fight, is that kind yeah. of the main takeaway there? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I realized a lot of things after that fight. I... Um, I kind of had a feeling that I needed to switch my camp up a little bit, you know. I felt I was focusing on the wrong, on the wrong game plan and the wrong areas of MMA for that fight. I should have grappled more, you know, instead I was trying to be a kickboxer because that's what I've been taught for the last few years, mm-hmm. just to strike. Like, I've neglected my grappling. And when I go back after that fight, I really went back and looked at all of my wins and they all came because of my grappling. So... I kind of realized that I needed to get back to what I'm really dominant at. Um, and also, like, I went through that camp very emotionally and mentally unstable. And then it showed in fight week. In fight week, I kind of fucked around the whole week. Um, I wasn't really focused. I wasn't really paying attention to what I needed to be doing. I wasn't happy. And then that was very apparent in the fight when I just mentally couldn't get into it, you know. So um, that's why I've made so many 
changes. This camp, like I started the camp, kind of doing the same thing I was doing, and as I as I got halfway through, I was like, no, this isn't right. Like I'm headed in the same direction that I was for the ice fight. So yeah, I've just I've changed up a lot. I've changed my style of training. I've changed coaches. You know, I've changed changed training partners, um, and I feel almost immediately as soon as I made those decisions to put them into action, I just felt like a whole new person. Mm, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so. I mean, I remember you also were saying when we last talked about how, uh, you know, you, you want the exciting fights and stuff. So with all that in mind, are you kind of like, uh, maybe let's let's also just go for the win, maybe more over excitement at times now? <laughs> uh, a bit of, I, I kind of want to do a bit of both, yeah. you know, like I know how mean and just gritty I can be. And that's what I want is I want just a really mean, gritty crappy fight you know mm-hmm. like the last fight wasn't entertaining it was just a point sparring match no one wants to watch that shit <laughs> lucky jessica and i are pretty because like people <laughs> kind of wanted to watch it because we're both half decent looking you know oh, but <laughs> like that's the only saving grace so yeah i want to win and i want to i want to get some of my aggressiveness back and, and just be mean and gritty and have people go like holy shit <laughs> Jess is really nasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, we see you working on your elbows a whole lot lately, so I'm <laughs> looking forward to that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, I know Andrea likes to, likes to use her voice tie clinch a lot, so I just, yeah, yeah. I, I've started using my tie clinch a lot as well. <laughs> oh, boy, going to get some blood in this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be that would be so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you and JoJo are sounding the same. She just recently was talking about how she's hoping for a bloody war in her next one too, which I definitely expect. So, you guys are loud for blood. <laughs> yeah, with uh, with that Lipsky girl for sure. Yeah, gonna be nuts. <laughs> so, yeah, looking ahead, you you have Andrea Lee as you mentioned. Uh, next at UFC on Fox 31 in Milwaukee, which also happens to be the last big Fox show, big show on Fox, which is pretty cool, I think, that you get to be on that. Um, yeah, I just, I just found that out this morning. Yeah, you were, I didn't even realize <laughs> until, like, probably an hour and a half ago. I know, they're not making, like, a big deal about it. I'm like, it's kind of a big deal, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, this is, I mean, the deal itself, the Fox deal was huge, so, like... They're just like, oh, we're ready to move on, I guess. Either way, I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, 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 I agree. And then, yeah, so I, I saw that you two both kind of admitted that it is a little bit weird matchmaking at the moment. Uh, and that being because, you know, offered her some support after her whole unfortunate incident, yeah. which we don't have to get into. But uh, did you ever end up hearing back from her or having talked to her since the fight has been made? Yeah, yeah, she she messaged me on Instagram and, you know, just said she was really appreciative of the offer, and, but she couldn't leave the state because um, of her daughter, which I understand. And I knew, like, her and, my, her and Chelsea, Ray, are really, really close. They used to live together, so I knew she'd been communicating to Chelsea about it as well. But it was nice to hear from her on Instagram, and I was like, yeah, cool, I completely understand, you know, I'll see you in Milwaukee and if you need anything, let me know. Yeah. She's like, yeah, sweet. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and so is it is it kind of like the weirdest situation? I mean, I don't know if you want to say weird, but it's kind of different, you know, for an opponent that you're having and you know, you're 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 have no ill will towards each other. Is it that kind of a, a thing that you think about or are you just like I'm going to stay focused on me, don't don't even think about it. Yeah, I never really have any ill feelings towards anyone that I've fought, you know? Mhm. Like, I don't think there's been a single person. I don't I know Jessica I talked a bit of trash, but I didn't know her. How can I how can I not like someone that I don't know? You yeah, know? Yeah. So even I, I kinda I'm more of the kill 'em with kindness kind of person. I don't really care what other people say. I never I don't have to hate someone to fight them. Yeah. I don't have to be mad at someone to fight them unless I'm there to do my job. Mm. I love my job. So why would I why would I bring that negativity into it? Yeah, wasted energy at times, you know. And yeah. So yeah. As for the fight itself, though, uh, as a fight, this has to be another one of those that you're pretty excited for, though, right? I mean, because you two are both exciting and fun to watch by yourselves. So when getting to meet each other in the octagon, it's a it's a great matchup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be either really good or just really boring. <laughs> you never know. So uh, I'm excited for it. You know, I've been wanting this one for a couple of years. And I'm a big fan of her. So yeah, I, I was. I said yes immediately as soon as they offered it. I was like, yeah, don't care when, don't care when. Yeah, 
that's the answer to me. So, yeah, you say you don't care when. So I guess this next question is pretty invalid because uh, <laughs> two weeks before uh, UFC, the Milwaukee one, is UFC Adelaide. And so I guess you're not too upset about not getting on that one then because it's just kind of funny no, timing I, there. I was pushing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was pushing to get on that one. Uh, we were pushing for a while to get on Adelaide because I'm like, oh, my family's in Adelaide, you know, mm-hmm. as well. And it would be nice to get a paid trip back home. But, um, yeah, I'm happy. The more fights I can kind of get in America as well, the better it is for me because the more I get introduced to the American market. Mm-hmm. So, being like, people already know me back home. Yeah. No, They're going to watch me regardless. But sometimes being on the Australian cards, they get broadcast at weird times over here and then people don't actually get to see me. So in the long run, it doesn't benefit me that much. So I'm grateful to be on another U.S. card. I'm always down to fight the U.S. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It was just, it was just kind of funny. I seeing all the Australian fans like on Twitter and stuff and they're like, come on, they couldn't have made this fight two weeks earlier, <laughs> you know, for us, <laughs> like what is going on? Yeah. And they did that with a bunch of other Australian fighters, like, you know, Megan's fighting at the end of the month, uh, Dan Hooker, I think he's fighting on your card too, just like all the guys are not on he's Adelaide. Fighting the Wolfies, bro, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just yeah. kind of... Yeah, but the, the Adelaide card is every single fight has an Aussie on it, you know, so yeah. they stacked it. It's weird that they didn't put any women on it, but they still stacked <laughs> And then there's a Melbourne pay per view coming up in February anyway, mm, so true, I'll either true. be there as a fighter or as a guest fighter, either way. So, yeah, we'll get to go back home with the UFC at some stage. Hell yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, okay, uh, let's see here. So, yeah, Ad- that Adelaide card happens two weeks before your fight, obviously, but then one yeah. week before, we'll get to see uh, a new champion in your division be crowned, and the uh, the whole that whole scene has just kind of been a mess in my opinion um what are your thoughts on everything that's yeah. gone down in the past couple of months regarding the the flyweight title uh to be honest i don't really care yeah it's, it's, it's all just such it's all just such bullshit that it doesn't like i don't even want to think about it until it's my day in contention mm-hmm. you know so right now i have other shit to focus on they can all fight amongst them and figure out what's going on but <laughs> like we've seen it's just been carnage it's been no one knows anything so there's no point I I, I yeah I don't even give it any thought just because it could change the day before like you never know yeah I mean that happened last time <laughs> so yeah exactly <laughs> I never know uh, do, do you have a, a somebody you're leaning towards in that fight between Valentina and Joanna, or you just you don't give a shit about that one either? <laughs> uh, I I think Joanna has more tools, you know, mm-hmm. in MMA. I think I think yeah, I, I'm kind of leaning towards her just because I feel like her style is super aggressive and Valentina is not. She's more of a counter striker. The mm-hmm. only time she's been super aggressive was against Priscilla and Priscilla wasn't at the level that she needed to be to fight someone of Valentina's caliber, you know? Yeah. So I'm kinda of, I'm leaning more towards Joanna just because I think she I think she presents more problems. Mm-hmm. Um Valentina's amazing, super talented, but she's also does the same stuff all the time. So I think it'll be exciting. Like I'm for sure I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> it'll be exciting either way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just a just a crazy, crazy couple of months. So it's it's gonna be good to get it sorted out, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right. So I can't not talk about Blue and your crew of dinosaur dogs before I let you go. <laughs> so I I have never ever in my life seen those types of dogs before until you got Blue. So what exactly are they, and why are they so amazing? <laughs> Uh, they're Australian cattle dogs called oh, Pernilla. Okay. So they're working dogs, super smart, super active, um, really loyal. Yeah, I love them. Blue's amazing. My two are, my two are so different from each other. Like, <laughs> Blue's really um, kind of neurotic. She's really smart, really neurotic, really, you can teach her tricks. Like, she's so smart. She understands most words that I say to her, like I say, go to bed, she'll run upstairs and put herself to bed. <laughs> I go, are you hungry? And she'll run to the cupboard where the food is, you know. I go, all right, go outside and she'll go and start pouring at the back door. Oh like, she's so smart. She, just does, she does everything. Um, and then Dog, Dog is, he's a little, he's a little uh, <laughs> skimmer. 
he's really, he's really sweet though. He's got just the sweetest personality. Like Blue's not a cuddler. She doesn't. She'll let you pat her. She's kind of like a cat. Like she'll let you pat her a couple of times, and she'll be like, "No, it's my fault." But um, dog, yeah, dog's really sweet. He'll cuddle. He'll just cuddle and cuddle and cuddle. Like he's so, yeah, he's so beautiful. <laughs> or they're just, yeah, they're so different from each other. I love them. They're best friends now. They hated like Blue hated him for such a long time, but. <laughs> Now, That's awesome. The best of both worlds with the personalities, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they complement each other really well. One's super high, strong, and then one's really relaxed. <laughs> That's awesome. Are they only in Australia then? Because, yeah, I've, I've literally never seen them. I've only seen you with them. So I, I really... Just... Oh, no, there's quite a few. Like, once I started posting about them, uh, I know a ton of people that have them, you know, out here. I, I just met um, a guy at Ted Point the other day whose name is also Jesse, who also has one. <laughs> of and course. Then one of my other friends from Syndicate went and got one as well. So, like, there are a lot of them around. I just, yeah, they're definitely rare. Like, there's breeders out here. I got dogs from a breeder. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, they're definitely, they're not from the state. But I think, good, like, they're some dogs. They're built to work. So, mm. you can't really have them in a park or anything. They need, they and too much energy expended, so they're hard to keep if you don't have the time to keep them. But mm. I'm not like when I look after Chelsea, look if Chelsea can't look after, look after him, so there's always someone to kind of play with them and hang out with them. They're never really on their own. Mm, okay, okay, yeah, really interesting. I mean, they seem like super awesome dogs. So I was like. Yeah, I totally got to ask her about them. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> fucking rad, dude. They're the best. Yeah, I mean, if I if I end up getting they dogs, make other and... dogs look shitty. <laughs> like, I see, I see some like I I see other dogs when we go to the park and stuff. We go, oh, your dog is just so shitty. My dog is so cool. I mean, yeah, they're so unique looking. I mean, it's and then yeah, they're they're yeah. really smart too. So freaking good deal. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Last thing that I have for you, and it's it's another thing yeah. that I can't not ask about, and it very well could could just be me thinking far too highly of myself, which is probably the case. <laughs> but <laughs> after after <laughs> after I wrote Jessica Rose Clark and the Life of a Heartbreaker, you walked out to heart the song Heartbreaker for UFC Singapore, and I lost my mind. <laughs> did you do that just because, or did I did I kind of help with this idea? I gotta know. <laughs> that was actually that that was actually uh, came about. Because of Hans Molikamp from Monster. Oh, okay. Damn it. So I think he started seeing, you know, for sure your article had a lot to do with it because I think he started seeing how much, like, the the name Heartbreaker was actually being used. And then he realized how much I used it. And then he realized how many Heartbreaker tattoos I have. And he was like, dude, this song's fucking perfect. You know, like, you should start walking out to this and walk out to it all the time because it's like, you know, um, well, like Chris Weidman's got that Tom Petty song yeah, so when yeah. it comes on you know Chris Weidman's about to walk out so that was kind of like once Hans like put that heartbreaking connection through, together and started seeing the articles and stuff he was like yeah this is perfect because I listen to a lot of 80s, 80s club as well and I'm all about you know girl power and stuff like that <laughs> Yeah, so that, yes, you did have something. To do awesome. With it. <laughs> okay. it was driving me nuts. It's when that when you walked out, I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> I was like, it's, it's, it's good, eh? Yeah, it's fucking perfect. It was. It was too good. That was too good. <laughs> so yeah. 